Good morning, how are you all? It's been really cloudy and overcast this morning. Literally, I come out here to switch the camera on and the sun comes out for you guys. How sweet is that? Uh, so, really frustrating morning so far. It's half 11. I've got up early. I finished off yesterday's video at really early. Got it up onto YouTube. I think published it like nine or half past nine this morning. And thought I'll just take a couple of hours, I'll finish off that bio like camp stove review thing I need to do, um, and I'll get that. There's only like an hour's worth more editing needed on it, and the, the software just <laughs> um, yes, I couldn't get the software to work. Oh, god, I get so frustrated with stuff like that, especially stuff that I pay every month for. I just expect it to work, it's not like rocket science, right. So I'm just checking for updates now. Um, I'm gonna have a coffee. I'm gonna try and calm the blood pressure down a little bit. Um, and then hopefully I can just take an hour, ping it all together, because I've done the bulk of the editing already. I just, I couldn't open that. The damn software couldn't find that lump of edited footage, which I'm staring at. It's there, you stupid program. It's right there. Anyway. I'm going to calm down now. So I'm going to go and have a coffee. I might go and sit out in the sun to drink it actually because, yeah, I might need a little bit of vitamin D in my life today. Um, I'm liking that you guys are up for the idea of a camp out this weekend. I'm thinking Saturday night and I really want to make cocktails this weekend. Um, Guy, one of my lovely friends, hi Guy, um, who makes the meanest ever espresso martini. I have got so horribly drunk on his espresso martinis in the past. They are the nuts. He left them the um, recipe in one of the video comments down below on an older video. So I scribbled it down and I've got everything in. So I think this weekend, camping and espresso martinis. I mean, doesn't that sound like the perfect weekend? Right, coffee, uh, cake. Oh, and I've got these the muffins, well, <clears throat> some of the muffins are left over. Yeah, don't count how many there are. There's a few, <laughs> but I need to shoot them for the blog post before they're all snaffled up. So I'll do that. Um, I might have had two for my breakfast this morning. It's fine. Uh, and then I'll look at the list because I've got no clue what today holds. Isn't that exciting? So I might have just done some updates and it might have actually made the software work again. So possibly it was my fault. <clears throat> Anyway, whatever. It's too little, too late, because I'm skiving now with a hot coffee and I'm gonna go and give the chickens some sweeties. Some there. Before I go and have my coffee, I thought I'd better come and check out the painting from yesterday. Doesn't that look adorable? And I think that's done. I don't need to put any more coats on there. Alrighty, I'm back in the chicken house doing my daily poo picking and I wanted to show you something really interesting. Um, like there's gonna be a lot of poo in this shot, so yeah. Okay, just behind all oh, this gigantuan pile of poo, this is an egg. Now this is gonna be from one of my old girls and as you can see, the shell hasn't formed. It's just like this really weird membrane um, and this is obviously what happens and this is why um, the egg industry, they don't keep old hens because like I was showing you that really thin shelled one in the nest the other day that broke um, and then it gives the other chickens like a taste for how yummy eggs are. Um, so I'm kind of lucky that the girls haven't found this. Somebody obviously just dropped it whilst they were sat on the roost last night or first thing this morning. So I'm going to go and throw that in the hedge. And we've got a full house again today, but can we just take a moment to appreciate how much of that egg must have hurt. Look at the size of it. It's like a ruddy duck egg. Let's put one of the little ones side by side with it to give you an idea. Ow. That must have been like passing a ruddy beach ball. And there's a strong possibility that that one is a double yoker. So uh, I think I might have to have that one. Chicken keepers tax. Look at these chickens. I haven't even managed to get the lid back on that thing yet and they're going bonkers for it. You girls are funny. <gasps> oh, you nearly had a red off then. <laughs> Brutes. <laughs> you 
girls are so funny. That's cheating. That's cheating. Sorry. I know I spoil all your fun, don't I? So this is the feed that we give to the chickens and ducks. It's a, an actual chicken food, it's for laying hens. And each of these pellets is like, it's the perfect nutrition basically to get a good egg supply from the chickens. It's also safe to give to ducks because it's unmedicated. There are medicated chicken feeds um, that you can't give to ducks. They're poisonous and it can do them harm. I don't bother paying the excess to get an organic feed but it is GMO free that's something that's very important to me I do not believe in genetically modified feeds um, so we buy this by the sack I think it's a 20 kilo sack and I think it's about seven or eight quid a bag and the new girls because they're popping out so many eggs they are eating a lot so I'm filling their feeder up probably every three maybe four days at the moment hopefully as we get more bugs in their run going into summer <laughs> they'll be getting a lot of their feed that way Alrighty, I'm just setting up a little photo shoot for those rhubarb muffins because I want to get them on the blog in the next couple of days. Um, so I thought you might like to see me set up a shoot, maybe? Um, let me flip the camera around and I'll show you what I'm doing first. Now I'm quite liking moody shots at the moment, so I like to put this pinny on because it takes any of the pattern out of my clothing out of the shot. So now I'm going to start using the timer and put me in the shot too and I'm just making sure that I haven't got paint or anything on my hands from yesterday. <laughs> I think we're good. And I just have to do that another 27 million times. It's a good workout, which is very helpful when you're eating all these muffins. So then I just check the exposure, I check the composition. It's quite nice actually. <clears throat> Do you have any idea it was so much fun? I can tether my camera so I could have my laptop sat here with the lead so I take the shot and then I can actually see it straight away on the computer screen. I don't know why I don't do that more. I think probably because I'm quite lazy <laughs> even though this probably works out to be way more effort. It's just kind of what you get used to isn't it? Fab. Now I'm going to get some in portrait. So I just need to flip the camera up. I use these ones for Pinterest predominantly. That's nice, but I'm thinking that this might be a little bit of overkill. So let's scrap that one. And this one, this is a cleaning cloth. Apparently I bought it years ago. Um, I bought it food, for food photography, but it was sold as a cleaning cloth. So I always found it quite funny that I use this on so many, the vast majority of my photo shoots, I use that bit of fabric. Okay, let's try that. Okay, I'm happier with them on that fabric than I was on the grey. And then the only other thing I like to do is an overhead shot. And for this, I need my chair. And you'll be glad to know 
but I still have my jeans tucked into my socks. <laughs> so we'll just do these ones on their own to start with. Perfect. And then sometimes I like to break one open and that's brilliant. That shows the inside of the muffin, obviously. Um, and there's some bright pink rhubarb on show. So that's lovely. And crumbs everywhere is always a good thing. The more real life you can make this, so by throwing some crumbs around or some seeds, if you're making a salad or some little leaves, all of that really brings life and character into a photo. And then it goes without saying that the best bit of any photo shoot is getting to eat your props at the end of it. <laughs> oh, these are so good. Mm. So, so good. If you've got a rhubarb patch in your garden, or you can safely get hold of some rhubarb at the mo, definitely give these ones a go. As soon as the blog post for this recipe is live, I'll pop a link to it down below this video. Before doing this shoot, I was reading through your comments to my mum. Thank you so much, it was so cute. And I've just read her comments back to you now, honestly. It was adorable. Thank you, you lot. And that's why I wanted to get them photographed soon because they are not going to last very long. Oh no, they're not. Right, I shall tidy up from this and then I think it's coffee o'clock and then I have no clue what we're gonna do next. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> So I don't feel I've actually shown you very much of anything today, so I'm going to take you for a little wander. Somebody, and unfortunately I didn't make a note of your name, I'm really, really sorry. I'd like to give you a shout out when I'm answering one of your questions, so apologies. Anyway, somebody asked if I could do a little tour, a little walk around the pond at the bottom of the farm and down the stream. Uh, it's such a beautiful area and it's such a beautiful day, so I think now is the perfect time to go and have that little wander and share it with you guys. Oh, and look, apple trees out in blossom. Isn't that beautiful? There's a heron on the pond. They are the most incredible looking birds. They look prehistoric. And they're very, very scared of humans, so he's going to leg it any minute now. Hopefully we'll catch it on film. That's so cool. Oh. See one of my ducks, one of my Muscovy ducks on the island on a nest. I would love for them to have babies, but we don't have a drake, so if they sit if they're sitting on eggs, they will be infertile. If anyone's interested in uh, Muscovy ducks for meat, for eggs, or just as pets like these are for us now, I'll link to a blog post I wrote on it years ago. One of the most popular blog posts on my entire website, funnily enough, it's about Muscovy ducks. Yeah, I think they're they're a wonderful bird. I absolutely love them. But I'll pop a link to that um, article below. So this is the pond, as you can see. Um, that's the island in the middle there. The water goes right the way around that, obviously. And it's all overgrown. It's just a, a nature place now. We, we don't do anything else with this area. So we can't walk all the way around it anymore, I don't think. And I'll show you why when we're around the other side. So it's, the pond is made up of two ponds. There's that big one there with the island on. And around the corner here is a smaller pond. And you can see it's we've just totally left it to nature. It's so lovely down here. There's my other little ducks. Hey girls! There's a tree falling down there. Lots of reed. <laughs> I planted these trees maybe five years ago with my mum. Wow, they've done all right. I love it in here. 
Doesn't it look like a little fairy tale glen? It's so pretty. So when we scoot round into this field, this is what we call the sledging field. So over that far end where it's a real gentle little run. And then coming up to this side, this is what we call the black run. And I've put a couple of videos out of me and the family um, sledging down here in the snow. Honestly, funniest thing, tears just rolling down my face. Even my 70 something year old mother giggling her way down that hill on a sledge. Funniest thing ever. Wow, I didn't even know this tree had gone over. A bit more firewood there, look. Hey ducks. The water level on this pond is way higher than it should be. So I imagine that's just loosened the root ball and it's toppled. Because all of these are underwater now and they shouldn't be. So there's the top of our pond and that used to be a path right in front of us but I don't know if you can see it's completely flooded over right now. And then down there it's quite a big drop down to two streams. Um, this pond was man-made. My dad built this. He got diggers in years and years and years ago and he put this pond in. And this is like a retaining wall kind of thing. But at some point that is going to give, that's going to go. If we don't get this water level down, that bank will definitely give up at some point. And I don't really want to be walking across that bit of grass when it goes. So I think possibly we need to get down here on the canoe and there's um, a pipe just there, if you can see it. Um, I think we need to try and get and take the top off that pipe and try and lower this water by a couple of feet. The reason that we raised up is that when I used to have um, Muscovy ducks having babies down here, um, it was my fear that the babies would get sucked down that pipe. So we raised it up above the water line and pop a, popped a little cap on it so that babies couldn't fall down it. And um, obviously ever since the water has gone up, which isn't ideal. Oh wow, I've just realised this tree's gone over too. Gosh, we need to get this water level down. And then this is looking back across that flooded path. And down there are the two streams. So this one nearest to us is on our property and then behind those trees is another stream which is on next door's property. And then down here is the path where you saw me cutting willow and where the stream is. So let's wander on down there and I'll give you a little tour of down there too. Oh, there's that heron. so cool. Hopefully we'll catch a shot of him on the way back up. So this is all those willows and these are grown for coppicing so they're used for firewood or <laughs> hurdle making in my case. All these little trees on the right we planted those a few years ago in the most horrific weather. It was hilarious. It was lashing down. We were dripping by the end of it. It was very funny. And then this is just a little turning area for the tractor because this is where all our garden waste comes and this is where we burn that. And then we can carry on past the fire pile. This is one of my favourite places to come down in the autumn and pick blackberries. We, there's a lovely variety of blackberry down here. They are massive and really juicy. Oh, look. And that's... A little deer print. We don't see deer very often, they're very shy animals obviously, but I think there's the proof that we have them. <laughs> I used to play down here as a kid and sit in this stream and make clay pots from the mud in the bottom. <laughs> 
and I showed you that little area the other day. So that's next door's field. It's such a hidden little spot. It's really lovely, very special place. So it's the next morning, I'm sat here editing this footage and I go into the camera to try and find the outro which I remember filming, or at least I remember talking to a camera, but it appears I didn't actually hit record. You would not believe the amount of times I've done that over the last 10 days, like, really? Feel free to whack that thumbs up if you've enjoyed this bizarre content that we're throwing at you every single day. And do subscribe to the channel too. It's not normally like this, I promise. Also, if you've got any friends that are in quarantine and you think are struggling a little bit and that they might like these videos, if they'd like a little bit of light relief on a sunny farm in Cornwall, then please do send them this way. We'd love to see them here to join the party. In regards to the whole hashtag quarantine camping, that's the hashtag I'm going with. Um, we're just gonna be out camping this weekend and I'll just record it. And then if, if you guys wanna join in, then please use that hashtag and then we'll be able to see it whatever platform you're on. I'm pretty much everywhere online as Hedgecomber. Um, but yeah, use that hashtag and I'll keep an eye out for it and I'll share some pics too. And obviously I'll be making one of these videos for the whole camping thing too. Um, and then if we're kind of up for it, maybe if next week we're a little bit more organized and we're still in lockdown, then possibly we'll do another quarantine camping next weekend because isn't next weekend Easter weekend? It's like it's the start of the camping season. Crazy, crazy times. Anyway, that's it for me. Look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.